What is up guys, Delboy here, hope you guys are doing well. So the undercard of Keith Furman versus Manny Pacquiao is starting to take shape. Obviously Keith Furman versus Manny Pacquiao goes down on July the 20th and I've got to say I'm really looking forward to it. I've seen a few people online moan about this fight for whatever reason but I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's evenly matched. Keith Furman has been very inactive and he looked vulnerable in his comeback fight against Josecito Lopez. Whereas Manny Pacquiao, he's 40 years old, he's not the same fighter he used to be. And, you know, given all the circumstances, I think it's a really evenly matched fight. And one I'm looking forward to. And the good news is, it's looking like the undercard really is starting to take shape. One fight has been officially confirmed for the undercard and two further fights are highly likely for this undercard. I will start with the confirmed fight. Now, it's not the strongest fight in the world. It's a typical type of title defense for a new world champion and that fight is between Caleb Plant and Mike Lee. Caleb Plant recently won the IBF super middleweight title back in January and this is his first defense. And on paper, this title defense should be fairly routine. I have seen a little bit of Mike Lee, and he looks fairly basic. You know, he'll come to fight, he'll try and apply pressure, but there really isn't anything special there. Caleb Plant should outbox Mike Lee, and he might even stop him in this fight. Defensively, Mike Lee is quite open, and I expect a sharp boxer like Caleb Plant to do a job on him, to be quite honest. Another thing to mention about this fight, Mike Lee, throughout his career, has been operating at light heavyweight. In fact, the guys actually fought as high as cruiserweight, so how effective will Mike Lee be at making weight, and is he going to be depleted at 168? You know, who knows, but that's not really a good look. I mean, how's this guy ranked for a title shot at 168? You know, usually... The IBF are fairly strict, but, you know, in this occasion, obviously not. And all in all, you know, even when Mike Lee was campaigning at light heavyweight, the guy's not fought anybody. I mean, if you look through his resume, I mean, look at some of the names on his resume. I mean, what would you say his best win is? Jose Hernandez, Justin Thomas. I mean, when you look at it, he's really fought a low level of competition. So I'm not really sold on Mike Lee doing anything in this fight. I think he will get beaten up and lose decisively, but I guess it's good to see Caleb Plant stay active. Hopefully after this fight, you know, he can try to unify or fight top contenders. So the Caleb Plant versus Mike Lee fight isn't great, but the next two fights that are being rumored to be on this undercard to me are very good. I like these fights. And the first being your Dennis Ugas versus Omar Figueroa Jr. I've heard this fight could be a WBC welterweight title eliminator. And, you know, stylistically, I think this is a good fight. As we know, your Dennis Ugas is a guy who likes to maintain range. He likes to use his jab and he'll try and counter. He's got long limbs. He's got fairly quick hands and snappy, respectable power. He's a good counterpuncher, and he's a good boxer, as we saw against Sean Porter. And I think his style will gel extremely well with an all-out aggressive fighter like Omar Figueroa Jr. Will your Dennis Ugas be the matador and lead Omar Figueroa into nice counter shots? Or will Omar Figueroa's work rate, aggression, and pace offset the... Uh, ring craft of your Dennis Ugas. You know, two contrasting styles, and I believe that makes for an intriguing fight. And there's a lot on the line because, again, a apparently this fight will be a WBC final eliminator. I mean, thinking about this fight, I would make your Dennis Ugas a favourite, but, you know, the guy in certain fights has kind of guessed down the stretch. He didn't against Porter to his credit, but I've seen him gas in the past. You know, if he gasses against a guy like Figueroa, who can apply good pressure, maybe Figueroa can pull off the upset. But it, it, I have to say, I do make 
you're Dennis Ugas, a favourite. But I think that's a really good fight. I really like that matchup. And um, yeah, I, I would definitely co sign that. If that fight got made for this undercard, I would be very excited. So I'm all for that fight. And another fight that's been mentioned for this undercard is an absolute barn burner between Sergei Lipinets and John Molina Jr. Now, I'm sure a few people out there will say, oh, why is John Molina Jr. getting recycled so much? And I get that, but, you know, the guy always brings good value for money. He always comes to fight, and he's a puncher. He's exciting. And Lipinets, you know, he needs to stay active. He's coming off a good win over Lamont Peterson, and he needs to build on that. If he can't get a big fight, why not fight a good, stay busy fight against John Molina Jr.? Because it's not a complete gimme. John Molina can punch. He has pulled off upsets in the past, and he's going to come to fight. If you get those two in the ring together, it's going to make for fireworks, to be quite honest. It's going to make for a really fun fight, as long as it lasts. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously, I would make Lipinets a favourite. In fact, I would lean towards Lipinets getting a stoppage in this fight. I was really impressed with his performance against Lamont Peterson, and I think he'll build on that and get a stoppage against uh, John Molina Jr. But you can never count John Molina Jr. out. I mean, I remember way back when he fought Mickey Bay when Mickey Bay was like an undefeated prospect, and Mickey Bay was basically winning every round. And in the last round, John Molina Jr. pulled out, I believe, a left hook that stunned Mickey Bay badly. And John Molina Jr. went on to stop Mickey Bay. You know, he pulled off an upset that night. And even a couple of years ago against Ruslan Provodnikov, you know, he pulled off an upset there. And most people expected him to lose that fight. So Molina's got an upset in him. He comes to fight. And he's always game and uh, value for money against anybody. So I've got no problem at all with Sergei Lipinets versus John Molina Jr. In fact, I'm all for it, if I'm being honest. And that's the main undercard news so far. I quite like the two welterweight fights that I mentioned. You know, the Lipinets fight and the Ugas fight. I think they're really solid additions. The Caleb Plant fight isn't the strongest, I've got to admit. But, you know, with a really good main event... You know, this card is taking shape and it's looking fairly decent. Not the greatest undercard in the world, but a lot stronger than the likes of Errol Spence Jr. versus Mikey Garcia. I mean, that undercard was pants. I didn't even have to pay for that in the UK, but I still struggled to sit through that. You know, complete mismatches from start to finish. But, you know, these fights, providing they come off, are quite decent. And with a good main event, you know, it could be a really good card. So, I'm remaining hopeful. Hopefully these fights get made for this card. And we get a good night of boxing. And, you know, from a UK perspective, I really hope this fight is on ITV4. Which is free TV in the UK. I've got my fingers well and truly crossed for that. And one more quick note as well, actually. There were rumours of... Nordim Ubali versus Lewis Neri for the WBC bantamweight title to be on this card. I can confirm that isn't true. Nordim Ubali is actually making his first defence of his WBC cruiserweight title in July in Kazakhstan, I believe. So we're not getting Lewis Neri versus Nordim Ubali on that card, unfortunately. That would have been a great fight for that card. Maybe that fight will happen down the line. I've heard talks about it, but, you know, nothing official yet, unfortunately. But, all in all, I think Manny Pacquiao versus Keith Thurman is shaping up to be a good night of boxing. If it could get one more really good fight on the undercard, I think it'd be a great card. So, fingers crossed we, uh, we get something special and something to really look forward to, you know. But I'm looking forward to this card a lot more than I expected. I'm looking forward to the fight a lot more than I expected. I think it's really evenly matched, and I can see it going either way. You know, maybe Keith Furman could regain some of his old form before he took that long layoff, or maybe Manny Pacquiao still has enough to deal with Keith Furman. We will see. Really looking forward to it. Share your thoughts below. Tell me how you feel about this card. Tell me how you feel about the main event, and tell me what you think 
of the fights I mentioned. Share your thoughts below. Peace.